Hello and welcome to a very different kind of video. Uh, I, I kind of want to just make this for myself uh, to kind of remember this in a sense. And, and if the uh, the content surrounding this the subject of this video would ever disappear, I would at least have a, a verbal record of it. And that is my social media feud with Edge, the WWE wrestler. Um, and, and it's definitely a clickbaity kind of title, but it's, it's an interesting story that I... I didn't really talk about it. I don't know when this actually took place. It was at some point this year, maybe four or five months ago. I'm not sure if I can see when the actual um, incident, 24 weeks ago, I'm not sure. So it was sometime uh, after the, the backlash pay-per-view, I think. So to, to give you some backstory to this, I, I got into a back and forth on, on Instagram with Edge and it was just like this surreal like 24, 30 hour period in which we were trading barbs almost back and forth on Instagram. And I just thought, what the fuck is going on? I'm, I'm kind of in a, an online feud with Edge. And then not like in a jokey way, like there was a legit kind of thing going back and forth. Uh, well, maybe there was a bit of jokiness going on there, at least in my part. And I wasn't quite sure what the, you know, if I was really pissing this guy off or not. And I would never intend to do it. But uh, anyway, so we'll get into this and, uh, you know, settle down, grab yourself a drink and we'll we'll talk about the story. It, it can't go without setting up my thoughts on Edge as a wrestler very briefly. Um, he's never been like a, a huge favorite of mine, but I've always enjoyed his uh, his work. Um, you know, in the days of me growing up, like in the '90s and watching Edge and Christian, I never liked him because he was a heel, and and you know, you kind of want the Hardy Boys to win or the Dudley Boys to win, and so you kind of you don't like them. And then obviously, as I get older, I start realizing that he's a really great wrestler, and he had neck issues and stuff, and then he really came into his own in the late 2000s and just had a hell of a run as a singles wrestler, as a WWE champion, a world heavyweight champion, and uh, I just always thought that he was just a really solid, you know, great worker, and just on another level when it came to promos, like he really understood character work and stuff, at least at least in my opinion, we'll get, we'll get into that, my view of things as well, which is another interesting part of this whole story, I think. But I was gutted when he retired because... You know, I, I met Connie in 2009 and, you know, she quickly kind of became ingratiated into the wrestling world and I told her all about it and stuff. And she enjoyed wrestling. She gravitated towards Rey Mysterio, Shawn Michaels, Edge and John Morrison. And within like a year and a half of us meeting and her getting into wrestling, Shawn Michaels retired, Rey Mysterio left the WWE, John Morrison packed his bags and fucked off and Edge had to retire. And that was kind of the death of Connie's love of wrestling, I think, until uh, we went to New Orleans for WrestleMania 30 and she you know, enjoyed some of that. But, uh, and, and she, you know, I guess you could say she loved The Undertaker because she uh, was really affected by that whole WrestleMania 30 situation. Getting off topic. <laughs> So Edge, you know, I've, I've always been been kind of a fan of, but he's never been like a huge favorite or anything. I remember reading his book and I, I really appreciated his uh, his honesty and his story. And yeah, that really connected me more to him as a wrestler. And I find that with with music and with wrestlers in particular, not so much with films, I suppose. Well, a little bit with films, but I really connect more to wrestlers and to musicians when I know their story and they, they have a really good story. You know, like I, I only got into Pink Floyd and Rush because I, I learned the backstory to that band and it's kind of like the music gets elevated by knowing the people behind the creations and, you know, the matches and the promos get elevated by knowing the man behind them or the woman. And so, you know, his book really helped me become even more of a fan of him. But again, I'm not saying he's ever been like my number one favorite or anything like that. When he came back, I just, I, I never expected it. The way that he talked in his podcast, I loved his podcast, by the way, The Edge and Christian Show. I mean, I remember many a time when I lived in Norway, just walking through the woods and around the, the nearby lakes that were very close to my house and just listening to that show and just chuckling along and just, it's just really good memories for me listening to that show when I lived in Norway. Really funny, both those guys, and I, I kind of wish that podcast would come back at some point. But um, that that made me more of a fan of him as a person than Edge the wrestler, you know, and just wow, he really like gets the wrestling business. Like he just has a really smart mind for it. And the things he'd say is like, oh, of course, like it makes perfect sense. It's just a really great way to look at things. Um, so when he came back, I just couldn't believe it. And and side note, I should have filmed this, but I I you know I remember sitting at the, the computer watching the network, and me and my friend were chatting back and forth. And we're like, oh, Edge is going to turn up. Just join like now, nah, fuck off. And then his music hit, and I just like my eyes just filled with tears. I couldn't believe it. Like, you know, no, I don't say no offense to Edge, but like it almost felt like he could have like walked out onto that or ran out to that stage. The, the music goes off, the pyros, the smoke, the music, and the fans. 
he could have just walked around and gone back and, and that would have been fine. Like, it was just, that moment was unbelievable. But then he goes on and wrestles for like 40 minutes and, you know, is taking bumps. And I mean, it was just like, I couldn't believe my eyes. And I was so happy for him. Like, holy shit, one achievement. And there's a great documentary about that called The Second Mountain on the, the network, which I highly recommend anyone check out if they haven't seen it. But, um, you know, moving to WrestleMania, it was so difficult with the pandemic and everything. It was so, like, disappointing that they couldn't do this in front of a crowd. I loved their WrestleMania, Ed, Edge and Randy Orton's WrestleMania match, the last man standing match. You know, I'm a guy who loves mainstream movies. I love the Marvel films, Star Wars, that kind of stuff. That's just, I love those films. But I also will love going to like a an art house cinema and watching a five and a half hour long silent film. You know, I get so much enjoyment and then yeah, it's an enriching experience in, in a different way. So for me, that Last Man Standing match was like, that was like one of, like for me, like the, the for the type of person that I am is like, I enjoy the kind of slower paced, methodical, artistic almost kind of matches where it's like, there's no crowd noise, you know, and it's just, they're just, they're just slugging at each other, you know, and it's slow and it's kind of painful. I just, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. People shat all over it. You know, I thought it was really good. And then they did the Backlash match, which was billed as the greatest match ever. Bullshit marketing. It, it kind of paints them into a corner. I think if you take away the greatest match ever tagline, if that match happened in front of a crowd, exactly as it happened, you know, in the match, I think we'd be looking at like a, a, a modern classic. I thought that match was phenomenal. The piped in crowd music didn't uh, music the crowd sounds and the chants didn't really like that very much. And there's two like cutaway shots where you're very aware that there's a camera where it shouldn't be, and so it kind of throws you out of it. And I thought those were un unnecessary, but the rest was it was just a phenomenal story, and I loved the match, and I was so happy for him to deliver something like that, especially during a difficult time where there's no fans. And then he got hurt. Um, I forget what his injury was actually. Um, was his arm or something? I don't know, his bicep or something? Or he tore a tricep maybe? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe should have researched that before making this video, but it is what it is. So, you know, he's out and it's like, it sucks and he's still out and I, I hope that he comes back and he's able to kind of continue this journey and, you know, end his career on his own terms. So he did this promo on Raw where he sat down in this ring and it's like dark lighting, very moody, and he just delivers this one take, like six minute promo about Randy Orton and what Randy Orton has taken from him and everything. And I was just like, whoa, this is a great pro. I'm like, I'm hooked in, I'm in the zone. And he's talking like this. And then he just starts shouting like that. And I was like, oh, oh. And then I became aware that I was watching a promo, not, not listening to a story, you know? And so I was like, oh, that kind of just dra dragged me out of it a little bit, you know? Oh, well, but it's still really good. So, cut forward to a few days, I'd kind of forgotten about this, but Edge, he posted this promo on his Instagram page. He wrote, Two-Face, my promo from Raw Monday filmed by my wonderfully talented and creative friend Jason Garris, who helped capture the Harvey Dent. And uh, I commented on it. And it was one of those things where you just throw it out into the ether, out into the... And I'm going to be checking my phone throughout this to get everything correct, so you'll see me looking down a lot. I just threw this comment out there on the, on the video. I mean, it's like, you know... If he hadn't posted about it, I wouldn't have made like a public fuss about it, you know, but I was just scrolling and just, oh yeah, that promo. Okay, I'll give my honest opinion. So I'm like typing away and I wrote, fantastic stuff, man. The shouting part jolted me out of it a bit. The intensity carries through without it for me. Uh, when the storytelling is this good, people will hang on every word. Now, it's one of those interesting things where, you know, you see like hundreds of comments, people saying, Edge are the best, Edge, that was amazing. You know, there's no, no mention or anything. And then I say something that is criticizing it and boom, you know, suddenly there's a, there's a, re <laughs> there's a reply. So Edge replied to me saying, the idea was to jolt. So it worked. It's a range of emotions, not one flat tone. And this is an interesting, you know, discussion, I think, because uh, there's a lot of truth in that, I think, and uh, you do need to vary things up a little bit, but it was one of those, the story he was telling to me was so engrossing, and the way that he was telling it, I was, I was, I was zoned in, you know, like, I, I didn't, the, the shouting just made me aware again that I was watching a promo, not listening to a story, and so, you know, and he said the idea was to jolt, but for me, I felt like that wasn't a, a good jolt, it was a bad jolt, so me being me, I replied, I said, I think you conveyed a range of emotions with the quiet tone. It was more intense. These things are going to land differently for everyone, but I appreciate the response and thought process. I only intend to be constructive. Smiley face. 
P.S. The Backlash match was the best thing I've seen in years. Can't wait for you to bounce back and deliver more nuanced storytelling like that. So I wanted to make it clear to him that I'm not like this hater or I'm trying to like bring him down. It was just my honest opinion and I was trying to be constructive about it. Um, but at the same time, I never intended it to be something where I felt like, you know, I have something to offer you in terms of, you know, expertise or knowledge about promos. It was just, you know, that's my, you know, that's my thought on it. Edge replied, Thanks. Send me your six-minute one-take promo next time so I can critique. Uh, and there's, like, a, a little smiley that's like, Jesus Christ, like, you know, yeah, thanks, buddy. Next time you do a six-minute one-take promo, let me know so I can critique you. Well, all right, then. We're, we're now in this thing now where, you know, his back is up a little bit, and now my back is getting up a little bit. I'm like, all right, fucking, like, okay, you want, you want to go? <laughs> I'm just like I'm just trying to like you know, and I understand how it sounds when I when I say it like that, and and there is this thing of like you know for him it's like I've been doing this for decades, I know what I'm doing, you know who are you to tell me you know that uh, that this didn't work, but you know I stand by it because it's my opinion, and uh, we'll get into it more as as we get through actually because there's there's a there's a point to that in terms of what I think about it and why that should be valid or not, so you know he said okay send me your six minute one take promo. I replied, I can take you up on that if there's a way to get it over to you. Ha ha. Which is, you know, like I'm not trying to establish that, okay, we're, we're joking here. Ha ha. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not being confrontational, but, you know, I'll take you up on that if you want to see me do a six minute one take promo. Edge replies, I don't think you'd want that. <laughs> I don't think you'd want that with a winky face. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just like, kind of, he's trying to like pull me down at this point, like, okay, buddy, uh, you know, you, you don't want that. Let's just leave it here. You know, you're not going to you know, impress me with anything, like, don't embarrass yourself now, I don't think you'd want that, you know, you're just gonna, it's dope, I understand where he's coming from, but for me, for anyone who's not aware, I used to wrestle, uh, from a very young age, 12, 13, I was, you know, wrestling with mates and stuff, and it was backyard wrestling, and then that continued, and I joined the UK backyard wrestling community in 2004, and wrestled pretty much consistently for about six or seven years, all around the UK, uh, and, you know, this was, I'd be in a field taking bumps, I'd be in a professional wrestling ring in front of a, a crowd of paying customers taking bumps, or I'd be in a gym hall in London somewhere taking bumps on stiff as fuck, you know, judo mats. Did a variety of things, and, you know, yeah, I did hardcore stuff, whereas, you know, I didn't really use a lot of barbed wire or, or, or the kind of thumbtacks, that's just too much for me, but, you know, yeah, I'd go through tables and that kind of thing, but... I love the storytelling stuff and I would love trying to do promos and, you know, get into character and, and, and tell a good story. And towards the end, I started to really get a feel for it, you know, and many of the, the guys that I wrestled with have gone on to have really great careers. There's Will Ospreay. I wrestled him once and it's funny to think that I once had a match with Will Ospreay where I was guiding him through every step of it. And this is in front of a, a crowd in Newcastle and it was a fun little 10 minute match we had. And, and now, you know, I could probably train for a hundred years and not even get 25% close to the, the level of talent that he has. And then there's other guys who are now in NXT UK, one of which I would consider one of my, my better friends and who I still talk to today. So in a way, I feel like I could have followed that path. Uh, but I know that for me, it just it, it wouldn't be the life for me. I'm, I'm too much of a homebody. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have the motivation and drive to succeed in the wrestling business, I don't think. But there was certainly, for me, I think, some sort of inane, in, innate talent. You know, there, there was something within me where it was just like, you know, I just have a knack for it, you know, I, I just would, ha I just have this instinctive feeling, and I loved it when wrestling, I'm just getting off into a bit of a tangent, but I loved it when I wrestled, when I would find someone who clicked with me, and this is something that you just can't explain to people if they haven't wrestled before, because it's such a unique fucking thing, where you get into a ring with someone, and you start locking up, and you start doing moves and stuff, and there's just like, you, you it's either difficult, uh, or, it, or it's okay, Oh, it's just like, it's smooth like butter, where you just like, you pick them up, you hook their arm, they know what you're doing, you move with it, and you just like, you know, there's some people you pick up for a suplex, you put their arm over their head, and you go, one, two, three, and then you go up and down, and then maybe you miss time it. There's some people, you just grab them, you put the arm over, and their body's moving exactly the, the way that you want it to, and you move, and it's fluid, and you're, you're just jamming back and forth, you're not even talking about what you're doing, and it's just working, you know, and there's a fluidity to it, and it's so fucking exciting to find someone that you have natural chemistry with, because it, it isn't there for everyone, at least in my experience of the, you know, 150 or so matches I had, uh, that was the exciting thing about the phys physicality of wrestling was the the chemistry, whether it be there or not, and then finding someone who you did have it with, and then doing more of that, and doing more matches, and then building a story and a feud out of it, that was kind of the stuff that really excited me, but um, yeah, and then promos, I felt like I got pretty okay at them towards the end there, 
and I did do a couple of one take, pretty much around six minute promos. So I think, all right, he's challenging me. I know he doesn't mean to challenge me. He's just kind of, you know, again, pouring me down, just, just giving me that pat on the head very condescendingly, like, you know, which is fair enough. And I just thought, well, I can, I can fucking show him something if he wants. He said, no, no, you don't want that. You don't want that. So we continue. I said, I'd welcome it, dude, in terms of I'd welcome you critiquing a promo of mine. Though I stopped wrestling five years ago, but to be clear, my comment doesn't come from a place of thinking I'm in a position to critique because I know what I'm talking about. It's just my reaction as a viewer. I'll dig out my last promo, though. Could be a laugh. So, you know, I'm stressing here that I don't feel like because I used to do promos, and I think that I was okay at them, that doesn't mean I think... I now have the authority to question and critique you, Edge, on how you deliver your promos. No. To me, it's just, hey, here's what me, as a viewer, thought worked and didn't work. You know, you had great intensity that carried through the quiet tone, and it was really captivating stuff. The shouting just jolted me out of it. That was my critique. Let's see. Okay, so the... the oh, wait, I'm not... I think he might have... Maybe he deleted something there. I don't know. Oh, no, okay. I th Actually, I think what happened, actually, was that he just didn't reply... And so I kind of raced home from work and tried to find the promo to upload somewhere. And then I, I followed it up with a second comment. Okay. I said, all right, man, it's put my money where my mouth is time. Not that I would ever have shared this, especially not to support my original comments. I can do a half decent promo, no more, no less. I'm home from work and have uploaded my last promo for you. A one take, 11 seconds shy of six minutes, however, with no real context, but I can at least say the match it was four happened on a backyard wrestling show that Will Ospreay also performed on, um, lest you think I'm some raving lunatic in a field. This whole thing has amused me and provided a great distraction during a bad week, so thanks for that. Critique away, smiley face. Yeah, it was a particularly rough week at work, if, if I remember correctly. It was just after I came back from um, isolation, I think, into work, and it, was, yeah, it wasn't fun. Um, so I left a link to it, and Edge replied, Link doesn't work! Exclamation mark and this is when i started thinking you might like i thought is he trying to like you know he's just not going to watch it you know but then i realized that you can't click on links on instagram you know with the comments and now other people are noticing this and commenting and stuff like edge i love you <laughs> so it's like we're having this, this back and forth and people just like interjecting um i guess they're seeing that he's replying to someone they want to get a reply themselves so I put, strange, that's the exact URL for the video, it's up and plays fine for me. Go on my YouTube channel, Razorwire Reviews, Red Avatar, it's the newest uploaded video. And then I commented again, failing that, here's a direct download link, all bases covered. But the YouTube does seem to be working, I'll leave it up to you. So I think he just didn't even realize that you could um, uh, actually... You know, you can't click on the, the Instagram comments, so you have to copy and paste it. And then someone chimed in and said, links don't work in Instagram, Instagram comments. Then I said, yeah, it would have to be copied and pasted. Not much I can do about that, unfortunately. So I guess what happened was he didn't realize that you need to copy and paste the, uh, the, the link to the promo. So he did it, and he watched it. And for the sake of this story, I'm going to present to you the promo that I did in its entirety. This is going to be a long video. It's been a long video. And, and this is the promo that I sent to Edge for him to critique and comment on. Um, purely out of the fun of the situation more than anything, um, I certainly wasn't looking for critique because I don't do promos anymore. And I made that clear to him. Like, I don't, I haven't wrestled for years, but this is the last one I did many years ago. And it was building up to my last ever match that I had in 2015 at a, um, a backyard show called Britfest uh, 15. The 15th, um, not annual Britfest, it kind of skipped a few years, but Britfest was like the big UK backyard wrestling show that would take place across many different feds over the years. It kind of molded and, and went up up south, up south, up north, down south, it went all over the country, and, uh, you know, this was like the big, the, the last one, pretty much. And I had a match, and it was, you know, I was really, uh, that's all of the story. I was happy with the match, but I was the heel, and there's a lot of backstory about it that, that won't make sense if you're listening to this promo, but this was me as this kind of really... Quasi deranged, really entitled, um, scorned heel who felt like he, he deserved so much more credit. And I took a little bit from my own life there. It, it was certainly fueled by a little bit of truth, not not entirely though. And I just really cranked it up. And ironically enough, had a promo where I did a lot of shouting, which you know kind of you know seems hypocritical when I'm sending it. But you know this, I I, I think it's a a weak point of this promo that I was shouting a lot. But you know it was nevertheless a promo that I did in one take one shot and the the concept was to walk 
like maybe like half a mile, quarter of a mile away from the camera and walk all the way up until we're in extreme close up. And that's where the crescendo of the promo hits. So I went out and filmed this at like five o'clock in the morning. And, and yeah, it was just brilliant because it was just like, I didn't plan on it, but there was this mist. And so I literally walked through the mist. It's just like a small dot figure in the background. And then suddenly I, I become, I get closer and closer. And I'm, I'm so far back, it almost doesn't seem like it's even moving. It's like a real strange effect that I think worked quite well visually. But as far as the actual performance of the promo, I mean, you can be the judge of that, but it's, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I certainly think just, trying to do stuff like this is better than not you know putting yourself out there is, is fairly important but um here's the promo enjoy he said he had an inch left to give well i've got a mile i've got a mile and i'm gonna walk it right now to prove it so dan dreamer reply to my challenge my challenge to a match at Britfest. And he said yes, he said yes, yes, yes. He'll be there at Britfest. Though I noticed in your video, Dan, you did say July 5th. Make no mistake, it is July 4th. There's no weaseling out of this one. Now you're committed to it. Because we all know that not being there is something you have excelled at in the past, isn't it, Dreamer? But I know you'll be there. I know you'll be there because you can't resist. You cannot resist, as I've said before, that one last moment in the sun. And you're gonna get it, Dan. You're gonna get it at Britfest. And I cannot wait. And I loved your video, Dan. You said a lot of really interesting things, how life is a, a matter between the, the head and the heart. And you should know, Dreamer, you should know that the mediator between the hand and the head should always be the heart. So you made the right decision, Dan. You made the right decision. Not for you, not for ECW, but for me. Oh yes, you made the right decision for me because I get at Britfest served practically on a golden platter my ultimate opportunity to prove everyone that everything I've been saying is the absolute truth. Now you say that ECW were the best because of the creativity, because of the fun times, the interfeds. And having a, having a beer with your friends. No, 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 Dreamer, no. I, I, I can't accept that as an answer. I can't. Because, because everything that I've done, everything, it means nothing. Why? Because I didn't drink, because I didn't smoke drugs, because I didn't take blowjobs from Daffy's in tents, because I didn't have social status. But you did. And that's why you're seen as a legend, and that's why I, I'm seen as a dreamer. You better be ready for Britfest. It is consuming me. My waking life consists of fantasizing over destroying you at Britfest. Oh yes. And I will. And I wanted to warn you, dreamer. I really wanted to warn you because I never want it to be said that I was an unkind, cruel man because I'm not. I'm a nice guy. I'm a generous guy. I'm a loving guy. And I wouldn't want you to walk into Britfest not knowing what's coming. I want you to go back. I want you to look at the videos, look at the comps, look at my matches and see what I've done to my opponents in the past to see what I will do to you. Okay? So you do that. But consider yourself warned. No matter how hard you prepare for Britfest, no matter how much you train, no matter how many of your ECW brothers you bring along, none of them in your moment in the sun will be able to protect you from being burned. None of them will be able to shield you from the humiliation, from the agonizing defeat at the hands of Sandok. None of them. And when it is all said and done, as they always say, and when the dust from your broken down body is settled and when the smoke that has been blown up your ass for 15 years too long has finally cleared the only thing that will be left in the middle of that ring at breakfast will be a pile of rubble the rubble that made up the wall of deceit that ECW built up around themselves and I will be standing atop that pile as the new icon the new legend 
the new greatest backyard wrestler of all time. And that is not a delusion of grandeur. That is a vision of reality. And it will be realized Saturday, July 4th, Rain MSX, RCWA, Britfest. And finally, finally, I'll be vindicated. And everything that I've done, all the bumps, all the sacrifices, all the pain, all the scratches, all the bruises, every drop of blood that I've spilt across this entire country will finally, finally be worth it. Dreamer, at Britfest, I take back my legacy and I crush yours. So there you have it. That was that was my final wrestling promo. I've certainly done better, and I have certainly done worse. And Edge watched it, and he finally replied, Hmm, interesting idea. Don't know if you are the one to critique promos, though, my friend. However, good on you for putting yourself out there, buddy. I remember telling Connie about this. She's like, wow, he called you friend and buddy in the same comment. <laughs> And, oh, I didn't even mention... Okay, I need to just... Quick sidebar here. I, I, I said I should have filmed the reaction. When I saw the Royal Rumble, when Edge came back at the beginning of the year, I knew that Connie would be really excited to see it. So I made her watch the Rumble, didn't tell her about it. And, and she was watching the Rumble. She's just like, I don't know these people. Like, why are you making me watch this? Then his music hit, and, and she teared up a few tears. She, she couldn't believe it. And it was, like, one of my favorite moments as a wrestling fan ever because she was so moved by it. And she just was, I was just brilliant. Oh my God, it was such a great moment. Anyway, so she was like, wow, he called you friend and buddy in the same comment. So it kind of rubbed me the wrong way because he said, I don't know if you're the one to critique promos, my friend. Like, I'm not saying that I was. I even I outlined that like twice in the comment thread. Like, look, I'm not saying because I've done promos before that I feel like I can critique you. I'm just, you know, giving my opinion as a viewer. That That's all it is. But, you know, so I... <laughs> I think I even mentioned that again. So I said, I was only throwing my take into the ether on a whim. I wouldn't think I was in any position to critique. It was just a viewer's opinion. So I had to clarify that just again. And then I said, ha ha, thanks. This was fun. And I'm sorry if I came across as a dick at all. Not my intention. Cheers. Because again, I didn't really want it to feel like I was going, hey, you, you didn't do this properly. And like, it wasn't that, you know, it was just kind of like, hey, I really like that. This wasn't so good, and you know, I think for me that's valid. That's a valid comment to make. And he replied to that saying, um, "Not at all, buddy. This was fun. Keep plugging." And the "keep plugging" comment makes me think that he thinks I'm still wrestling or trying to make it, which again I had said wasn't the case. But uh, I left it there. There was nothing more to really say, you know. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's two more replies. One guy says, "Hey, Edge, how is Christian? It worries me a lot." And then someone else says, I never had a chance to congratulate you on the Hall of Fame in <laughs> indicated. So congratulations, Edge. Um, yeah, anyway, so that was it. That was the, uh, and if you, if you don't believe me, it's all, it's all there on the, on the Instagram. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it was a cool thing. It was, it was a frustrating thing because I, I didn't feel like he was getting my point. And there's only so much, you know, minutia you can really get across in tone when it comes to text on a screen. But uh, it was super fun. Like, it was just like, okay, he clearly got his back up about it, and I understand. And, and I, can, I can imagine him looking at it and saying, what, yeah, what was this little prick? Like, I, I, I've spent, like, years of my life kind of working my, my way back to my dream. And I've come back. I've conquered the odds and, you know, climbed the second mountain, and I'm, I'm coming back. And I'm doing some of the best work of my career and it's the, the response from the fans is great. It's so gratifying and doing the work is great. And then I have this great match and I get injured and it's like it stops before it even gets really going and the fans aren't there and it's really difficult. And this fucking prick is saying, well, that was a good promo, but you shouted a bit too much. Like, I understand. 
um, Wyatt got his back up, and uh, yeah, but then, you know, I'm not one to kind of back down from my opinion on stuff, uh, not that I'm very outwardly vocal, but you know, if someone calls me out on something like that where I feel like, you know, well, no, not actually, you know, I don't know, it's just one of those things where I just, um, I couldn't let it drop, and Connie was mortified, like, when I told her about this, as it was kind of, like, transpiring, she was like, stop, just like, Edge is gonna hate you, I think Edge hates you, I'm like, he doesn't hate me, because I know he's got a sense of humor, I know that he's not this guy who kind of will, will really get to, I know he's not like a Jericho, you know, no offense to Jericho, but Jericho, you know, he, he will be a dick very quickly, with, without much reasoning, you know, if, if you kind of, even look at him the wrong way on social media, Jericho will get really antsy, but, um, you know, Edge, you know, I, I know that he's a cool guy, and, and he's got good values, and he's a good person, and, uh, but, you know, clearly this is something that he was very, um, happy with, and, um, you know, here's someone saying they didn't like it, and so I understand, but, you know, I'm sure they get that a lot at the same time, you know, but it was nice the way that it did pan out, and that I did show him that promo, and that he watched it, or at least watch some of it, I don't know, the fact that he said interesting idea at least shows that he watched and knew that it was a, the concept was me walking through the, the thing, he might have skimmed it, I don't know, but the fact that he watched it is pretty damn cool, and it isn't a great promo, but it's not a bad one either at the same time, it's interesting, I think people might cringe at something like that because it's so far of what I do on YouTube perhaps, and you don't know the story and the, 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 back, the, the context behind it and everything, uh, and maybe it just isn't convincing as an acting performance, and I would completely agree with that, you know. Um, I, for me, as far as the level I was at and the level I got to in, in doing promos for wrestling, I think that's about as good as I got. There's a few more I did that were a little bit better than that, I think, and a bit more um, nuanced, perhaps, and not as shouty and things. But, uh, you know, I, I tried to give it my all, and uh, and that's all that you can do, I suppose. And, and like you said, good on you for, for putting it out there, and it's not something I publicize a lot, but I will talk about it, and I will say, yeah, I did that, and, and here's this, and here's that. I would fucking die if I had to show it to someone. If I had to sit in a room physically with someone and watch one of my promos, like I'd, I'd probably just want to kill myself. Like if that's one of those things where you know I'm not, <laughs> I'm not at the confidence level to do that. Like never. You know, it just it's very strange to me to even think about it. Even a YouTube video, I'd be like, oh my god. Like, you know, I'll sometimes be at my 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 brother and sister's house and hey, look, there's this YouTube video you put up and they start playing it and I'm just like crawling out of my skin, it's like, it's weird, you know, it, it, it's, it is weird, and I'm, I'm very, I'm naturally a shy person, which doesn't make any fucking sense when I would do the wrestling, but the wrestling really brought me out of myself in a way that I feel like, um, I'm a much better person for it socially, which, um, I certainly struggled with in my, my childhood years, my, my teenage years, but anyway, that's all of the story, but that was the Luke versus Edge social media feud story, <laughs> a little bit overblown, but it was still, you know, it's interesting, I've never gotten into that kind of a discussion with, um, with, with an artist like that, and I, I would class wrestlers as artists, someone in the entertainment field, like, you know, I've, I've had replies from people, you know, like actors and things, and directors, but to actually get a back and forth, a back and forth was, uh, really unique, and kind of a little bit stressful, because I really want him to understand my point of view, and, uh, and it was just so funny when he said, well, how about you show me your one take six minute promo? And I'm just like, I've got a few of those. <laughs> I've done a few of those like years ago. I can actually show you one. Like, it's so funny when someone calls you out on something and they do it in a way where it's just like, you know, that you've got nothing to come back at, you know, with, with a comment like that. And I'm just like, I can come back at that and I can give you exactly what you're calling me out for. So, you know, whether it's good or bad, it was just funny to me that he said that. And it's just like, well, here you go. And, uh, and there we go. So, yeah, and it was nice to end it cordially and everything. And, uh, you know, as he said, this was fun. And it was fun. A little frustrating, you know, um, and a little bit stressful, but a little bit fun. A little, a little bit more than a little fun, I think. It was, it was very good. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. This has been logged and immortalized and preserved in my verbal form. And, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a very unique video for my channel, but I'll just throw it out there, as I did with the original comment, into the ether, and you can either enjoy it or not. It is what it is. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you're right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. He's, but he's not quite as cool as you, because...